Okay, everybody. Welcome to Liberation Freedom Ministry tonight. Tonight, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I got a lot of information to cover. And so, again, I might be talking a little bit fast, but if you're watching online, you can hit that rewind button. Um, just I kind of want to do this in a timely fashion tonight. So, I want to talk about this subject, which many of you have probably heard of, and but you may not really be aware of what is ritual abuse. And that is, uh, is an extreme form of, you, of abuse and goes into very deep deliverance. Now, I believe in these last days we're going to see more effects of ritual abuse. And so... But this is going to be a brief intro into many related topics. As ritual abuse goes very deep, and my goal here is just to bring an awareness, uh, more so than teach you how to deal with it, because it's, again, it's, uh, it's complex. Now, of course, when we teach, we're never up here to scare you. We're not here to put fear into you. Um, now, obviously, when... In the book of Exodus, the Jews were up against the strongest forces of earth at that time. And the odds were against them. But when you have Yah, when you have God on your side, you're in the majority. Even if it's just you and him. And so you're on the winning side regardless. But I believe that we're in similar times today. If you look at the book of Revelation, it has a lot of similarities to the book of Exodus. Just saying. Now, I'm most definitely not claiming to be an expert on this topic. Because some of, uh, some of this is right in front of us. But we're still not seeing it. Some of what I'm going to say is going to be my opinion. Some of it's going to be based on the research that I've done podcasts that I've heard, um, and others are going to be based on conversations or ministry that I've done with what the, the term is survivors, and that are those who have escaped and are still working to overcome past ritual abuse. Now, I want to give a trigger warning, and I don't think I'm going to go so deep uh, for most of what I'm going to say. Uh, but I need to say up front, if you know that you're a survivor or have certain triggers that you know cause you to disassociate, then you may not want to watch this or you may want to be very careful uh, as you are watching this. Now, of course, many people uh, probably don't know what their triggers are. Not everyone does. And I also want to give a, an LFM plausibility clause, which says... Uh, the ministry of LFM may not necessarily agree with everything I say tonight, <laughs> you know, but I believe what I'm, uh, you know, because I'm honored to speak here, of course, and, uh, but I believe what I'm speaking is spiritual and truth in reality. Okay, so let us get started. Now, ritual abuse. This term came about in the early 1980s to describe a particular abuse which was mostly towards children, involving organized rituals as a central theme. A 1989 report by the Ritual Abuse Task Force of Los Angeles County Commission for Women defined ritual abuse in the following way. Ritual abuse involves deep, repeated abuse over an extended period of time. The physical abuse is severe, sometimes including torture and killing. The sexual abuse is usually painful, sadistic, and humiliating, intended as a mean of gaining dominance over the victim. The psychological abuse is devastating, and it involves the use of ritual indoctrination. It includes mind control techniques, which convey to the victim a profound terror 
of the cult members and of evil spirits they believe cult members can command. Both during and after the abuse, most victims are in a state of terror, mind control, and disassociation. Now, here are just a few examples of the torture methods that they use, but although there's many. Uh, Near-death experiences, such as putting a person in a coffin with another dead person, or with snakes, or spiders, or other creatures, perhaps being buried alive, perhaps, uh, you know, uh, yeah, drowning, exactly, thank you, uh, near drowning. Uh, and again, a little short trigger warning over this next uh, minute or so as I go over these right quick. Um, they may make you choose uh, between killing two people. Now, I don't know if any of you have seen this or not. Uh, not that I'm suggesting that you do. Is anyone familiar with those that, that movie series called Saw? Yeah, I, su I suggest you do not watch that. That is a psychological, psychological horror series. And it basically puts people in different scenarios where they have to choose between doing this or someone else get killed. And they do a lot of things like that. And so, so they may even do elect electric shocks to a person's genitalia, even at the point of conception. Um, they can do abuse and illusion to make the victim believe that Yeshua, Jesus, doesn't love them and that he will severely abuse the victim in ways that I really don't care to repeat, um, which is why then ministering to people like that, if you say the name Jesus, they're going to be like, uh-uh, I don't want no part of that. And so, you know, those people that have gone through that, tor uh, that type of torture, you can't use those names. You might have to use the one who's light, you know, Yeshua, uh, you know, in case they programmed against that too. Uh, in order, you know, when you minister to them, they may have a Jesus character, someone put on a Jesus suit, be nice to them, and then later on Jesus turns around and beats them and or rapes them. And so, so choosing evil is reinforced while choosing independence is violently reprimanded. Now, this is done largely to, uh, to create a person that is highly disassociative and out of touch with their own feelings. And so that person then will look to their handlers on how they should think, feel, on what they should do. Um, I talked to a lady that was ministering to um, survivors. She said, I had a client. I didn't know it was this bad. I didn't know I had to tell my client when to use the bathroom. And there were several accidents until she figured it out. And so ritual abuse has a strong trauma-based mind control aspect to it. Now, if you're born into a family of generational abusers, the torture can start as soon as the child is born. You know, as they study to see how the child can be manipulated, um, how they can manipulate the child, how they can uh, they look at their study their natural characteristics and behaviors, and then they know how to use those behaviors against them, you know, and those around them. Uh, you know, if you are a very strong character that stands for somebody else, they know how to deal with that. If you're one that's, you know, you're a little bit more emotional, they know how to deal with that. And so the victim lies, lives in a constant, constant state of terror, mental co confusion, and disassociation. And this is done to get the victim to not trust him or herself. They feel they can't trust their own emotions, their own thoughts. Now, we actually see this in a lesser form in governments today, where they try to get you to believe that you're not really smart enough to make your own decisions. Like, they, um, they want you to believe them, you know, as they tell you what you should think, uh, what you should believe, and so they will tell you what to do. It's all about mind control. 
Now, I've heard directly from many survivors that tried to reach out to churchgoers only to be told that they're crazy, that it's your imagination. You're just making things up because some of these stories are so wild, you're like, that cannot be. That cannot happen in this society, in this day and age. So, so many times the survivor gets hurt, rejected, and isolated even more, insult to injury. And in a somewhat similar manner, uh, manner uh, many here know this to be true because you have told others about deliverance and they look at you like you're crazy, like you have a third eye. Yeah, and you might, exactly, just some of you. <laughs> yes, I didn't get rid of any third eyes today, but maybe tomorrow. Um, and some of the stories, again, are so outlandish, they're hard to believe. And so oftentimes, uh, the rituals that happen in this SRA actually happen within churches, schools, daycare centers, hospitals, within DFACS, the Department of Family and Children's Services, other social services, etc. As children are told, if they tell anybody, they will be killed. And a lot of times, they'll kill someone right in front of that child to show them they're not joking. Uh, they have a, a very... Uh, uh, it's almost kind of like an addiction to porn where they're kind of addicted to violence. They like that. And so, and I've heard from parents directly that said that they did not realize that their child was being groomed or even worse by teachers in their school. So let's talk a little bit about history. Question. How many people know what Operation Paperclip is? All right, take out two over here. Okay, one over there. So basically, this is where the U.S., the United States, uh, captured around you know roughly 1,600 Nazi Germans in World War II. Uh, that was during the Third Reich. These were scientists, engineers, technicians, etc. And that was uh, for the U.S. military to gain advantage in the Soviet Ameri American Cold War and the space race. Now, if you, again, if you research this stuff, if you want to, you know, pause or rewind or whatever, in particular, you should look up Joseph Mengele. That's M-E-N-G-E-L-E. -E -E, also known as Dr. Green, also known as the Doctor of Death, who did experiments at Auschwitz and also was believed to be involved in occult, uh, doing psychic powers and search and such. Uh, they were doing a lot of um, uh, sending ESP, yes, hypnosis, sending even people's souls to other places. Some people even say other planets. Um, now, but many of these scientists provided foundational research for, guess what, for, for NASA. Yeah, if you look up NASA, you'll see there's many awards to many Germans that have been given because they had a lot of knowledge. And so that's the foundation of our secret space program today. And so... These Cold War Nazis were hired by many government security agencies, such as the CIA, the FBI, uh, and I believe the NSA, the National Security Agency, which is the biggest of them all, which dwarfs every other security agency in the United States. So some people believe today we are actually in the Fourth Reich. And if you think about WEF, World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, it's like, hmm, 
kind of fits. Okay, moving on. How many people are familiar with MKUltra? Okay, got some more hands, more hands, more hands. Okay, great, fantastic. So that was a program from 1953 to 1973. Now, do you know where MKUltra originated from and why? MK, in part, MKUltra came out of uh, nations being concerned that if their spies were caught, they would give up all their information. If, when they were tortured, they would sing like a canary. And so, you know, when they were being tortured or whatever. So around that time, you know, uh, late 1940s, early 1950s, they discovered the art of disassociation, in which case they could hide personalities or alters behind a presenter. Now, many of you know that we deal with alters here. Now, so the presenter being the main personality that is upfront living life, um, but that main presenter, it may not even be aware of the other alters, personalities that are there. And so now, MK Ultra since then has been closed and is now uh, being followed currently by the Monarch Project as this work continues to make human disassociated slaves. So sometimes in some of those Disney movies and stuff like that, you see butterflies. Guess what? They don't put that there just for fun. Now, in any case, uh, they create an amnesia wall that's created so that the presenter doesn't know of any other personalities or information or assignments that the other personalities have. Because again, if you think about this, um, well, I'll get to that in a second. So these other personalities could then be called up by a certain trigger, such as a code word or a phrase. In the 1980s, we heard about sleeper cells, and they were concerned that someone might get a call. You know, that, yeah, they get activated, they get the word, and you become a Manchurian candidate, assassinate, whatever. And so sometimes those movies have a little bit of truth to them. And so, so this amnesia wall is done by extreme torture, drugs, hypnosis, and other methods. And so, in other words, these other personalities are very well hidden. They can't be seen when you look at someone. They don't even know that they're there themselves. And they're hidden from the outside world. Also consider that this has been being done since the late 1940s, the early 1950s. So that's around what? 70 years. In other words, this has gotten very complex, and they very much know what they're doing. They're very good at this. You know, it's, it's evil genius, to be quite honest. Okay, so question. Well, who would do this? Who would do such a thing, Noe? Well... There are two different types of ritual abuses that I know of. The one that most people are aware of is satanic ritual abuse, SRA. Obviously, because that has more of a direct uh, satanic religious connection. And again, this was an, a popular topic in the 1980s that was downplayed by many authorities as hysteria and false memories, or in today's language, fake news, as they always try to downplay things. I heard the other day that we're having a shortage of um, conspiracy theories because they're all coming true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or that Noah of the Bible was a conspiracy theorist. Yes. Anyways. Now, so... This has been historically the case, even today, where society does not want to face the truth as it makes the people that hear it uncomfortable. So they tend to look the other way. Now, in some cases, this could be categorized as the sin of omission. 
Now, I'm not saying necessarily that every claim is true, but to just downplay it and ignore it is something else. You can refer to Deuteronomy 13, verse 8, and Leviticus 20, verses 1 through 5 for that. Because we are even held accountable for those things that God wants us to do that we don't do. Now, there is another form of ritual abuse, and that is government-sponsored. Now, many of you may be familiar with how China has been working on to create super soldiers. Okay, you got a lot of head shakes there, okay. Um, they're doing that many different ways, but you know, using DNA modification and technology. Now, China doesn't have the moral restrictions on testing humans, well, as the United States once publicly had, which is why many scientists that wanted to do DNA experiments went to China. Just like some governments that wanted to have biological weapon labs put them in Ukraine. So do you think if the U.S. knows that China as a potential threat in the arms race, uh, knowing that they're creating super soldiers, do you think that the U.S. is not going to try to compete so that they don't fall behind? It has been very well established that governments do trials and tests on their own people, even those in the military or others in different countries without their knowledge or approval. You know, in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, you know, the it started out as probably, you know, families against families, tribes versus tribes, uh, regions against regions, and then eventually continents against continents. So we're in a time where the world is a much smaller place and a lot more advanced. In Genesis 1 verse 26, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heaven and over the livestock and over all of the earth and over all the creeping creatures that creep on the ground. In my mind, anyways, if he tells you to take dominion something, to rule over something, it's like, because he kind of knew something wasn't right there to begin with. Like, you don't take dominion or, or rule, at least in my mind, over something that's good. Like, I think he knew that there was a lot of evil out there that we had to take over, you know. Um, you know, sin's crouching at your feet. You got to learn how to master it, that type of stuff. Now, but I think as people, we try to take dominion over one another. We have totally missed that point. So I regularly follow up on technology on various different, in various different fields. AI, um, artificial intelligence, uh, I probably need to look at more quantum technologies because that stuff's, uh, yeah, um, robotics, medical, neuroscience, military weapons, and science, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, is unbelievably advanced in these days. The stuff that I read about, it is off the charts. Because I'm always like, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Until the next article, I'm like, no, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. And then the next one, I'm like, no. Yeah, yeah it is just like day after day. I'm like, it's insane. And so, so I'm fascinated by it all. But at the same time, I understand that the more man learns, the more we use it to control one another, to take dominion over one another. So I believe that the Illuminati exists. Or as you may hear many global politicians refer to the New World Order. 
and they have said it. So I believe much of the chaos that is happening in the world today is being done on purpose to advance that cause because, again, they admit it at this point. They're very open about it. So Illuminati follows a philosophy known as Illuminism or Enlightenment. And while this name started, you know, appearing around several hundred years ago, the roots can be traced back to the ancient mystery regions of Egypt, the ancient, you know, ancient Babylon, and other places. Some of the groups that came out of these roots include the Knights Templar, the Rosicrucians, the Druidic cults, and others. Now, these, over time, developed into the modern-day Illuminism, which started with the German branch of Rosicrucianism. Now, Rosicrucianism is a spiritual and cultural movement that arose in Europe in the early 17th century, built on esoteric truths, of the ancient past and provides insight into nature, the physical universe, and the spiritual realm. But it conceals all this from the average man. Their manifestos include references to Kabbalah, Kabbalah, Kabbalah however you want to say that, alchemy, Christian mysticism, and hermeticism which is a combo mix of the Greek god of Hermes and the Egyptian god of Thoth. Thoth, is that how you say it? Yeah, I don't know how you say it. And so, and you might be asking, well, Noe, how come, why don't we see this? Great question. Now, consider what the Bible has to say because the enemy also works on biblical principles. Matthew 13, verse 10. And the disciples came to him, to Jesus, and they said, why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, saying, because it has been given to you to know the secrets of the reign of the heavens, but it, his, it has not been given to them. So the enemy uses the same logic, just in an evil way. In other words, those that are in the Illuminati are trained to talk in a different language using numerology, colors, symbols, etc. And this way they can talk in front of non-members who are not enlightened, and non-members will not even realize that they are communicating to one another right in front of them. Some of you may be familiar with the, uh, with the pop culture, you know, people using opal, open symbols, such as black eyes, which was earlier 2022, um, you know, the covering of one eye, uh, the okay symbol over the eye, the triangle shape with the hands, now, are they all part of the Illuminati? I don't know. You know, but, you know, but some of them are pretty suspicious when you consider other factors. Now, how about this? How many of you watched the 2022 halftime Super Bowl show between the Rams and the Bengals? We got one. <laughs> I thought you'd be a strong yes. No, okay. By chance, in the halftime show with Dre and Snoopy Doggy Dog and other names I don't know, did you catch all the Illuminati symbols? I didn't, to be honest. And this was another national event 
where there was communication going on that most people were oblivious to, including me. That halftime show was so loaded because they're communicating out, communicating out to their different cells. They're saying messages, and the rest of us missed it. Now, if you get a chance, if you're interested, I strongly suggest that you look at this YouTube channel, again, that kind of breaks it down, and it's very complex. Uh, the lady's name is Gina, G-I-N-A, dash, Phillips, P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S, D as in darkness, the number two, and then an L as in light. Gina-Phillips D2L. She has some videos out there. Uh, they go very deep. But some of the ones I'm specifically are referring to are the Super Bowl 22, 2022 decode number one and the video number two. Uh, fascinating. Now, uh, let me narrow this down a little bit. The Bible says a lot about disciples being led by the Spirit and not their soul. That's the way it's originally intended. That's, that's the goal. Now, most people are led by their soul, their carnal desires, where their soul is larger than their human spirit. Now, and this is what the enemy wants. For our soul to rule over our human spirit, because then Satan has a better chance of using our human spirit for his purposes. Satan knows that our greater power lies in our spirit and not our soul. Now we know that Yah, that God, is about free will and desires that we choose him freely. Now, of course, the prince of this world wants to take dominion over us and use our spiritual power. You know, the, the dark energy that comes from, uh, from hate, from unforgiveness, you know, from murder, etc. Because when you break it all down, it's all about energy. We are just energy. Another teaching for another day. Anyways, Satan wants to use that spiritual power, the negative power, to feed his army. He wants to make slaves out of us, which is why the New World Order is pushing the Great Reset, which will enslave us all, or try to, and they are very open about this, you know, for those that doubt it. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Human 2.0. Yep. And so, you know, although they say it in most of the time in very politically correct terms, they make it sound very nice or not as bad. Now, this great reset includes transhumanism. You said human 2.0, also known as singularity, as they eventually want to upload uh, they want to mesh us with computers, which is already being done now, you know, but, you know, then if they put a virus in us, you know, we don't have total control of ourselves. And then, so if we sin, you know, how does Jesus deal with that? I'm sure he has a way, but anyways, but now but we're not in as much as control as we are of ourselves as we were. Um, a lot more to that I'm not going to go into. So they want to upload all of our minds to a virtual world where there will be holograms in a virtual metaverse. Many of you have heard that term. Okay. And so, where they will basically have total control over us. You can look for more information on that at 2045.com. They give their timeline, their agendas, the goals, the objectives. Again, they don't hide this stuff. But again, this comes back to free will versus control, which is the battle 
that is going on in our world today. The new world, world order creates problems that they say that they have the solution to as they are trying to further their agenda. You know, all the stuff that we see nowadays, the starvation, uh, the, the cryptocurrency, which in the past two weeks or a week has just tanked huge. And so the Fed's like, oh, well, that's because we need to go over to crypto. They're trying to push that. All these things are, they're all planned. Yeah, 5G is not your friend, totally. And so, um, so basically they're trying to strip away more of our freedoms and then we give it to them. Oh, well, you have the answer, so therefore, yes, we'll give you more of our freedoms, which they'll use to control, over, control us. But how do they do this? Well, in a number of ways, but also through some people whom they program through ritual abuse. They then plant these people in various places and positions to get the desired effects that they want. For example, they may cause people to riot. Yep, mass murder. They may have a shooter go on a rampage or have somebody sleep with a politician for the purposes of blackmail. Okay, what is programming? There is an Illuminati victim and a programmer uh, that defected. She goes by the name of Savali, spelled S-V-A-L-I. Now, I'm not sure when that happened, but at least you know by the early 2000s, I believe, she wrote extensively about why and how the Illuminati program people. So if you look up the essential Savali, you can find a free PDF, and the information there is astounding. Now, back then, because again, we're talking early 2000s, uh, they would program people, because you want to... You don't want to kill everyone off, so you don't want to program a child too harshly. You kind of, you know. And so, but they program people designed uh, in a method designed for their age level. But all age levels included heavy trauma and abuse in every way possible because, again, they have been developing these techniques for hundreds of years. All that's going on now it's been going on for a long time, is my belief. Now, these organizations, in order to maintain secrecy, must have people that are totally dedicated to the cause and not revealing secrets, even to the point of death. They are groomed to never question the orders they are given. And then these victims are given jobs such as informers, breeders. I actually talked to a minister um, not too long ago, and she said, I would minister to like 11 or 12-year-olds that were breeders, and as soon as her baby was born, it was sacrificed in front of them. Now, these breeders, they can have babies every six months, but you're like, well, how? Because the hospitals and the science that they have is a lot more advanced than the hospitals that we go to. And so they can give them drugs to make them have a baby every six months. Yeah, because there's a lot of, there's big money in that. Like these people, Illuminati, they're banks, they're ruling the world. They're, they're you know, they're the ruling nations. Now, Breeders, okay, other jobs, prostitutes, pornography, media, high priests or priestesses, trainers, uh, punishers, trackers, teachers, couriers, behavioral scientists, even others that go like in a school and set up the whole table and the room and the lights and everything, 
you know, or that come and clean up the mess even after everything's done. So, again, this is a worldwide effort. Now, these people are in military, they're in government, banking institutions, schools, churches, daycare centers. They are highly trained even if they look innocent. You know, they may seem like pillars of community during the day, you know, but at night, yeah, because uh, they are highly trained to blend in, to not stand out. And while they're not standing out, they are taking note of everything. Now, keep in mind, again, this is a global operation that is trying to take the world down so they can establish themselves as rulers as they believe that they were created to rule the earth, to dominate the world. They are sadistic and believe in survival of the fittest. They believe that if you cannot take them down, you don't deserve to live. They enjoy this and they consider everybody else weak and less than human. So they divide and conquer, much like we see in the U.S. now. Now, to, they use a variety of means to program a person, and one of those means is, uh, is to focus on the brain using different frequencies. Now, some of the more known frequencies are alpha, which I, I didn't write down the, the hertz or the gigahertz or, you know, the hertz, actually. Uh, but anyways, alpha. And so the alpha wave believe that you can reach all of the ultra personalities over the alpha frequencies. Access codes and sexual alters are usually placed there. And in the alpha frequency, it also holds a lot of emotions. Beta will often hold cult protectors, internal warriors, and military systems. Although I've read some sources that said that beta is the sexual programming slave, you know, the sex kitten layer, which is why the whole Hello Kitty theme, you know, a few years ago was a big thing. And also, uh, we saw women wearing, you know, these stars or whatever singers wearing the leopard-type clothing. That was, yeah, again, it was right in front of us. Yeah, the mermaid. Yeah. Now, now since this is in part science, different scientists may do different things, you know, differently at different times as they're trying to figure out the best way to program people. It's not an exact science. There's, they tinker with stuff all the time. There's the gamma frequencies that often hold uh, extremely cult loyal alters. Cult loyal meaning uh, like the Patty Hearst, the uh, Stockholm Syndrome, where you kind of feel sorry for those that come against you. So the ones that are cult loyal like, if you're pulling up that altar, like, it's not going to want to turn to Jesus. It's like, no, I'm, you know, I want to stay more with the family. And so there's also the um, delta frequency holds the most cognitive memories uh, so that, you know, uh, and that may have amnesia programming stored there, along with self-destruct, psychotic programming, and other punishment programming. Theta represents negative spiritual programming, altars that participate in blood rituals, sacrifices, seers, warlocks. And there are thousands of different programs. You know, suicide, governmental, uh, assassins, financial. Um, and I want to give you some quick training examples here. So the first one is to train a child to not need. So a small toddler or child is placed in a room without any sensory stimulation. And usually a training room with a gray, white, or beige walls. The adult leaves and the child is left alone for periods of time. This might be from, you know, hours or, you know, an entire day as the child grows older. If the child begs the adult to stay and not leave or screams, the child is beaten. And told that the period of isolation will increase 
until they learn to stop being weak. The purpose of this discipline is to teach the child to rely on its own internal resources uh, and not outside people. In other words, to strengthen it. Now, what it actually does is create a huge terror of abandonment within the child. Now, when the adult or the trainer returns to the room, the child is found rocking itself you know, or hugging itself in a corner, almost you know, occasionally catatonic with, yeah, catatonic fear. And so the trainer will then rescue the child, feed it, give it something to drink, bond with the child as their savior. And the trainer will tell them that the family told the trainer to rescue the child because the family loves him or her. The trainer will then install cult teachings at this point into the helpless, fearful, and almost insanely grateful child who has been rescued from isolation. The trainer will reinforce in the child over and over how much it needs its family, who just rescued it from death or by starvation or abandonment. This will teach the very young toddler to associate comfort and security with bonding with his trainer, who may be one of its parents, and being with family members. The cult is very aware of child development principles. Here's another one. To not wish. A child is placed in a room with favorite toys or objects. A kind adult comes into the room and engages in the child in play. This adult may be a friend, an aunt, a parent, a trainer. The child and the adult may engage in fantasy play about the child's secret wishes, dreams, or wants. And this will occur on several occasions as the child's trust is slowly built. At some point later, the child is severely punished for any aspect of wishing or fantasy shared with the adult, including the destruction of, the favorites, of his favorite toys going in and undoing or destroying secret safe places the child may have created. This step is repeated with variations many times over the ensuing years, and occasionally the child's siblings, parents, or friends will be used to reveal inside fantasies the child has revealed to them during the daytime or in unguarded moments. Now, the reason the cult does this is uh, to create a child who doesn't fantasize, who is more outwardly directed, less inwardly directed. In other words, the child is to look for adults for permission in all aspects of life, including internal but the reality is that this step is destroys all safe place, places the child has created internally uh, to retreat from the horrors that it's experiencing. This step creates in the child the feeling that there is no true safety. The cult will find out everything it thinks. Exercises like this are used to create young alters in the child who will self-report to the cult trainers any secret safe places or covert wishes against the cult that other altars have. So these altars, if there's some altar that's trying to break free, the ones that have been trained this way are going to report that to the handlers. So they're, they're in a sense, snitching on themselves. So other programming internal worlds are created as the victim is rebuilt in a way that the handlers use to control the person as they begin to set up inner system hostility and divisiveness, which the cult will manipulate throughout the person's lifespan in order to control them. Now, while those steps are hideous, they're still very basic in concept, uh, but, and they get much more complex. With advancements in technology, these perpetrators can now communicate with program people via high frequency um, radio waves. And researching this, there's actually a lot of US patents on this technology. I mean, they don't state that we're using it to, you know, of course, to program people, but there's numerous patents on this stuff that can be done. You can look up the terms gang stalking, targeted individuals, 
psychotronic weapons to see how more people are coming out these days saying that the government or groups of people are targeting them with technological, uh, electronic, and physical harassment. Uh, this includes voice to skull, or V2K, technology, neuro-linguistic programming, using energy-based frequency weapons, and also smart dust technology, which is a nanotechnology. When you can breathe it in, you don't, it looks like dust. And so it's so small. Um, using these methods, there's no evidence. The normal person, you're not going to see this nanotechnology. I mean, and, and the radio waves, they're invisible because, again, it's using high frequency waves like 5G. And so you can't see it, and then the victim doesn't know who's attacking him. So Pastor Donnie and I have ministered to someone that states that they believe that they're a targeted individual. Uh, it is very well that they probably have been. And so we were able to pull up soul fragments that kind of seem to confirm that. Uh, but initially it sounds kind of crazy. Um, so they can make with these high energy frequency weapons, a person feel like they're on fire and never touch you because they'll just, they'll get the neurons and the, and the, and the nerve cells to start firing and then make it feel like you're on fire. But when someone's looking at you, they're like, what's wrong with you? And so they can beam voices into people's heads. And if you aren't familiar with how Yah, God, talks to you, and what it feels like, you might be tempted to believe that the voice that you hear in your head is actually God talking to you. When it's not. Some believe that this is part uh, of what was referenced in Revelation 17, verse 13. They call it the beast system. As we give our powers over to the new world order. So this is what we're up against. And as more people are becoming aware and not telling survivors or targeted in individuals that they're crazy, the more that these victims feel empowered to talk about their experiences. When dealing with the soul fragments of somebody that has gone through ritual abuse, you can't just go in a session like gangbusters and try to get as many out of there as quick as you can. That is not wise. Because there's a lot that is going on that has to be treated very delicately. As these survivors need emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual healing. It's just not the time in the session. There's also the time outside of the session that has to be managed as well. Plus, the programmers put traps in there, knowing that if a person goes to get healing, it might set off some type of programming, a suicide programming. It could set off some other type of program, cause them to be sick. Um, so it's very dicey and delicate. So we're battling more than just demons these days. I believe that the veil is thinning between the first and second heavens, and that the demonic is influencing people on the earth like never before. Again, I'm not here to cause panic or fear or spread fear. We're just in a time when I believe knowing the voice of God, of Yah, however he speaks to you, will be your greatest asset. And so I'm also big into disciples developing their spiritual gifts because it states in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3, for although... For though we, are, we walk in the flesh, we do not fight according to the flesh. For the weapons we fight are not fleshly, but mighty in God. And I'm going to start closing this out. Almost done here. Um, I did a teaching called Soul versus Spirit Technology in the last days, around a year ago. Uh, and you can find that on the Walk with Yah YouTube channel. And that goes in more detail if you want to hear what I have to say on that. But the battle is against our spirit, soul, and mind. But we can start by renewing our mind, Romans 12, 2, and setting our minds on the things above, Colossians 3, 2. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5 says, 
overthrowing reasonings and every high matter that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, of Elohim, taking captive every thought to make it obedient to the Messiah. We have to remember that love never fails. And we have to love these people. They can be healed. And so if there's anyone out there that has been uh, a victim, a survivor, there is hope for you. And, you know, Jesus, he died for you as well. So I just want to encourage you. Um, almost done here. Psalm 37, verses 11. The Bible says, But the meek, those that are poor and humble, uh, shall inherit the earth and delight themselves in plenty of peace. The wrong plots against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at them. Psalm 37, verse 13. But God laughs at them, for he sees that their day is coming. And who are the meek ones? Those are the disciples that humble themselves and are obedient uh, as Jesus leads, because he is the commander of the army of God. So I'm going to sum up what we just talked over. I'm going to break it down to three points here. Ritual abuse is happening all around us, and people are getting gang stalked. And I'm trying to make you aware of what's going on as the enemy likes to hide in the darkness. It's, it's, it's time to get red-pilled, um, a reference to that movie, The Matrix. Or in other words, it's time to become knowledgeable of the enemy's devices or plans. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11. Number two, knowing Yah's voice, God's voice, I believe will be your greatest asset. Now, you need to develop that type of discernment as well as your spiritual gifts. And that takes time, so I suggest that you start doing that now. Number three, try to love as much as possible and don't have any fear or any other low-frequency negative emotions uh, because that's just going to empower their, their methods. So, again, when it comes down to it, we're, we're all just energy, and we need to be more, have more positive light that we get from the Father of Lights um, than whatever negative darkness that we get from Satan, which is Isaiah 5, verse 20. And this is how we win. And that is all I have for tonight. Hopefully I've given you a lot of things to think about, to go back and research. Um, again, nothing to be scared of, but just uh, to be knowledgeable about. But I pray that it helps you in some type of way. And again, this is uh, Noe with uh, Liberation Freedom Ministry. Glad to be here. Thank you very much. <laughs>